really smart pro bike for you here. This is the Colnago V4 RS of Portuguese UAE Team Emirates rider Jao Almeida. Now I'm going to tell you everything about it. There's lots of little neat details on here. It really is a beautiful bike and I'm also going to weigh it and do a free hub sound check as well as measure some key bits. So this is the standard team paint job for UAE Team Emirates this season. We've, we've seen that before. Um, it's really smart though, with the sort of matte black, the sort of silver uh, black that's kind of got like, yeah, it's like a silver fade into black on the top tube. It's subtle, very smart. But what I've not seen before is these particular Envy wheels. So they have been using Envy wheels all season, but these ones have now a metallic Envy logo graphic on and these weren't at the UAE tour when I was there so um, or I didn't see them at least um, and I like them because it matches the the brushed metallic kind of steel effect Colnago logo that's on the down tube overall the look very smart um, I've noticed they do have a lot of Envy 65s uh, in the back of the team truck as well so on the flatter days probably going to be using those which are seriously deep aero wheels but the 4.5s are sort of more all-round use so 4.5 because it's slightly deeper on the back than it is on the front which kind of makes a lot of sense because the front wheel doesn't catch the air, uh, the wind as much, um, being a little bit shallower. Uh, another neat detail on these Envy wheels is they have hidden nipples. This is well, I'm a big fan of hidden nipples. Um, there's apparently a slight aero gain through having them, something in the region of around half a watt at 45 kilometers an hour. It's not a lot, but someone like me, I'll take it. I'll take it every day of the week, twice on Sundays. And carrying on with the wheels, um, they've it's striking how wide they are. So these Envy, Envy wheels have historically been pretty wide in their internal rim width. And that continues here. So there's 28 millimeter uh, Continental GP 5000 TRs mounted on there. And 28 wide, but these things, they're ballooning out to like 32 millimeters wide. Um, and that's because the internal rim width on the wheel is so big. They really do look chunky. Uh, I hope that comes across on camera, but yeah, compared to, you know, even what I'm used to, it's it really is very, very wide, but presumably the team feel that there is a performance gain to that and, and the wheels are designed, they're optimized around 28 millimeter tires for aero and, for, and all the rest of that. The other thing to point out is that they're running them tubeless, which seems to be like, I mean, I haven't actually seen a team that's not running tubeless yet at this year's Giro in both time trials and on the road. It seems that the whole teams have made the full switch to tubeless, which, um, well, it makes sense. And it's easier logistically if all the team is on one system. Um, it makes the mechanics' lives much easier. So on the front wheel, we've got 160 rotor, 140 on the back. I've noticed that on UAE's time trial bikes, they're running 140 rotors on the front for that little bit of aero, slight weight saving, etc. But yeah, the standard on the road, again, seems to be 160, 140. Um, and that's what the neutral service uh, has too. As we move on to the drivetrain, it's full Shimano Di2 uh, all over the place. Now, that, that's significant on the basis that last year, um, historically, UAE was sponsored by Campagnolo. Now it's on Shimano. So the chain ring on there is a big one. And that's a 5440. So uh, slightly bigger than the standard 5339 that most pros use. Um, but I guess Jao feels that that's uh, something he can get away with because he's running the bigger Jura Ace cassette on the back. So he's got an 1134. So really versatile having that 34. It means you can run bigger gears up front. Uh, and that's paired with 172.5 millimeter cranks. Um, for those wondering, Jao is, uh, well, according to pro cycling stats, 178 centimeters. Uh, the bottom bracket on this bike is pretty cool. So it's a T47 and it's ceramic speed naturally so a little bit of a performance gain there and uh, that's also found on the headset so you've got the ceramic speed uh, solid 
um, race technology, SLT uh, bearings in here. Uh, solid lubrication technology, I think it stands for, um, which makes total sense on a headset bearing because it doesn't need to go fast, low rolling resistance RPMs, but it just needs to last. So I'm a big fan of that when they had that on the launch. Um, what is different though from the standard model that you or I would buy in the shops um, is it doesn't have the tool in the headset. So if you recall when we did a video when the V4RS first came out, there is a tool that hides in the uh, in the headset there but that has been removed you've got a standard expanding uh, bung and um, and top cap on there because well it saves weight uh, that tool weighs stuff and you don't need a tool when you're riding around do you the mechanics are following you in the car with all the tools so no point um nice luxury to have the saddle is a pro logo scratch ms nice carbon rails and it's sort of slammed right far forward on the rails. There's a bit of layback on the seat post. Um, it's not a fully straight post, but yeah, slammed right far forwards. Um, help presumably get in that more sort of TT aero uh, position. Speaking of which, when we move on to the cockpit, this is a really nice all-in-one uh, Envy carbon cockpit. Now, Envy used to have a lot of flare on the on the drops of their uh, custom bars. This, this bar doesn't have any flare of the drops at all. Um, and I've measured it. It's 38 centimetres centre to centre. So it's not the narrowest one they make. Um, and it's 41 centimetres uh, end to end. And then on the front of that, we've got this really nice uh, K edge mount as well underneath there so you can fit the uh, the head unit onto there and although the bar isn't super narrow Jow's levers are pointed inwards um, as has become a fashion for a lot of the riders these days I've done a few more measurements as well on the cockpit so the stem it's quite difficult to measure uh, because it depends where you measure it from but it, on, on an integrated one like this but it's looking like it's around 13 centimeters and the bar to saddle is looking like it's 54 centimetres and the saddle height 72 centimetres and I'm pretty sure this is a, a 52 or 51 centimetre frame. Other little details on here, what well, we've got the Shimano pedals and they just seem to be the standard Q-Factor ones, they're not extra wide. And we've got the Shimano power meter. Neat little detail with that is that they've glued the magnet to the frame rather than using the standard sort of cap uh, cover that goes over the top of it. Saves a bit of weight. Well, it looks cool as well. I like that. Um, and um, the chain, wax chain patrol. I've, um, well, hang on, I've, I'm just going to wipe it. That chain is, is really clean. I think you could eat your dinner off it, but I don't think it's been lubed yet. I think the mechanics haven't lubed it until it's ready to race. So my guess is that they're not waxing the chain. Might be a drip on wax though. Give them the benefit of the doubt. And we've also got this 3D printed number mount on the D-shaped seat pin there, which looks very, very lightweight. Um, it's very neat as well. But uh, what's the total weight of the bike uh, with these elite bottle cages on it? They're pretty light, they're carbon. Um, let's find out. So 7.22 kilograms. Is that more or less than you were expecting? Let us know in the, in the comments section below. Um, as I picked it up, though, I noticed a, a, an interesting sort of weight saving uh, measure on the bike, which is to do with the saddle clamp mechanism. So this seat post is designed for a sort of standard round clamping mechanism, um, but they've changed it and they're using something else, which I, it looks like you would do that to save a bit of weight. Um, I might be wrong, but um, yeah, intriguing, intriguing that they've done that. But you don't care about that. All you guys want is the free hub sound check. So, um, well, I, I'm a big fan of MV Hub. So let's see what's going on. Oh, come on! Don't let me down. That is that's. A, that's a good one. That is a good one. Not dragging either. Look at that. Crank set staying perfectly still. No drag at all. Nice. So there you have it, Jowl made us bike. Let us know what you think of it in the comments section below and uh, let us know what other bikes you'd like us to see and uh, try and film for you guys and take a closer look at and we'll do our best to get them. But to make sure you don't miss them, well, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.